coming up. Is the honeymoon over already for the PUP? And the state of the nation is not great. You're listening to Brent's Two Cents, the semi-serious thoughts of a guy in Belize. And now here's the host of this podcast from somewhere in Belize City, Brent Toombs. Hey, welcome to the podcast for the week of November the 23rd. Well, the PUP may have scored one of the biggest election victories in Belize's post-independent history, but it seems they may have also enjoyed the shortest honeymoon period for any new government. The first week for the PM started out pretty well. I think most people agreed with not only his choices for who would serve in his cabinet, but for the restructuring of certain portfolios. Issues such as climate change, the blue economy, indigenous people's affairs, and political reform were all given special attention in the new cabinet. There's even a minister assigned to diaspora relations now. But less than seven days after being officially sworn in to run the country, Many of the same people who had voted blue were coming down hard on Prime Minister Briseño for reported appointments of people whom Channel 7's Jules Vasquez called the politically undead. These were old ghosts of PUP government's past being offered plum jobs as CEOs in several ministries. The three names being floated that caused the loudest outcry were Marco Tulio Mendez, Amalia Mai, and Narda Garcia. Marco Tulio Mendez was a one-term PUP area rep for Orange Walk East from 2012 until 2015. He stepped down just prior to the 2015 election due to allegations that he had sexually assaulted children close to him. He was eventually charged with seven offenses of a sexual nature, including carnal knowledge all of this allegedly occurring between 2006 and 2011. Now, those charges were eventually dropped at the request of the victim's family. So, I have to make it perfectly clear. Marco Tulio Mendez was never convicted of sex crimes against children in a court of law. But the seriousness of the allegations against him not only ended his brief political career, but have cast a very long shadow over him. And he certainly would not have been my first choice for CEO in the Ministry of Health. Amalia Mai served as the CEO in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Musa administration. She was at the center of the scandal when 10 million US dollars was diverted to Belize Bank to cover a private debt owed by a private hospital. That money was eventually reclaimed by the Barrow administration. But that resulted in a decade of legal scrapping with Lord Michael Ashcroft. And by 2018, the debt had ballooned to $90 million. While he was Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dean Barrow insisted he would never pay that award. And he even had his own government vote against a bill that he had to introduce in Parliament to approve payment. But that doesn't mean the debt went away. In fact, it's been growing, likely at 6% interest per year. And nobody expects that Ashcroft will just forget about collecting. So now Amalia Mai is reportedly going right back to the same position she enjoyed 12 years ago when this whole mess began. An obvious reward for not only being loyal to Johnny Briseño, but for how kindly Channel 5 has treated Briseño on the evening news for all these years. And of course, it must be mentioned that Channel 5 is owned by none other than Lord Michael Ashcroft. So, connect the dots on that one. But the name that likely stinks the most for Belizeans, regardless of their political affiliation, is Narda Garcia. Garcia was the general manager of the Social Security Board from 1999 until she was fired in 2006 based on a recommendation of the Senate Special Committee probe into financial mismanagement at SSB. Among other things under her watch, 
SSB guaranteed $17.5 million in loans for companies owned by a former PUP minister. These loans were very poorly securitized. In one case, a piece of undeveloped property worth $50,000 was used as collateral for a loan of $9.8 million. Under Garcia's watch, there were millions and millions of social security funds available for a few people with the right connections, regardless of collateral. One of those beneficiaries was the St. James Building Society, a company linked to Glenn Godfrey. They sold millions of highly dubious mortgages to SSB, who then teamed up with the Development Finance Corporation to securitize and bundle those mortgages for sale on the North American market, all fully guaranteed by the government of Belize. The chairman of DFC at the time was none other than Glenn Godfrey. Now, in her defense, Garcia said she did nothing wrong and only went along with decisions made by the investment committee, of which she was a member. But at one point, nearly one-third of SSB's investment portfolio was non-performing. If it wasn't for fixed-term deposits in banks, earning a robust 8% at that time, and safely out of reach from Garcia and the SSB Investment Committee, it's quite possible that the Belize Social Security Board would have been mismanaged into bankruptcy. Now, after a 22-month Senate inquiry into the mess at SSB, the committee determined that Garcia had been negligent and reckless in the execution of her duty and recommended that she no longer hold office. Shortly thereafter, the board of directors at SSB voted to terminate her contract. A contract that still had four years remaining, because regardless of the scandal she had been embroiled in at the time, Garcia still managed to somehow negotiate a five-year deal for herself. However, her termination package was reported to only be $95,000, or less than one year's salary. Garcia did try to sue the senators who recommended her dismissal, claiming, among other things, that the Senate had no legal power to conduct an investigation. But the court threw out 11 of her claims, only agreeing that Garcia had been denied natural justice by the Senate committee because they did not give her an opportunity to defend herself before recommending that she be removed as general manager at SSB. She was not awarded damages, and all parties were ordered to pay their own legal costs. Justice Samuel Awich also issued a warning that in the future, he may award costs against anyone who pleads too many unnecessary grounds. So it's important to understand the context of that lawsuit, because loyalists for Garcia have already been arguing on social media that she was somehow vindicated in the Supreme Court. And she most certainly was not. But on Tuesday of last week, media houses began reporting that Garcia, Mai, and Mendez would be CEOs and the public backlash was swift and it was strong. The very next day, Prime Minister Brasenio was on TV denying that any official appointments had been made and saying that only the Governor General can appoint a CEO. On the recommendation of the Prime Minister, of course. Brasenio says that CEOs will be discussed at the Cabinet meeting this week and formal announcements will be made after that. But he didn't say that these ghosts of the PUP past won't be returning to the corridors of power. So, even if Garcia, Mai, and Mendez don't end up as CEOs as first reported, they will certainly be rewarded for their loyalty one way or the other. The fact that these are the first names to get called by what Belizeans had hoped would be a different PUP government is more than a bit concerning. It's infuriating. Prime Minister, If you're listening, you need to understand just how upset the people who voted you in are right now. You did not get elected because of the loyalty of a few dozen cronies. You got elected because 88,000 Belizeans were fed up with UDP corruption. So fed up that they finally gave your party another shot at running this country after your 12-year timeout. 
But like I said last week, this is a post-social media Belize. We don't wait for the papers to come out on Thursdays and Fridays to tell us how to think. You can do all the softball interviews you want with party-friendly media houses, but we're not going to swallow your bullshit. We are engaged, we talk, we speak up, and some of us even do podcasts. We demand better from you. That's the deal the people of Belize made when they hired you on November the 11th. Prime Minister, you have a super majority in Parliament. You know all those reforms you talked about while in opposition? Do them. Start with actually implementing the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Make election and boundaries an independent body. You know that redistricting you were in favor of just before the election? Let's see you make that happen. You don't even have to go to court anymore. You have the numbers in the House to make it happen. If you still have the will. So, what checks and balances are you going to put in place to make sure that no one ever treats the people's money like their personal piggy bank ever again? What are you going to do to ensure that no crony gets a bloated contract to build a road or an exclusive concession to import prescription drugs or garlic? What is your plan to make sure that Belizean citizenship is not sold like some black market commodity to criminals and con men all over the world. How about finally ending ministerial discretion? Guess what? You can do that too, if you dare. You see, what the people got so pissed off with the UDP about, we were also pretty pissed off at the PUP 12 years ago for the same shit. But if you're going to start this new relationship by resurrecting a bunch of ghosts from the Moose administration, well, you can forget about a honeymoon. Because some of us are already thinking about divorce. We want to hear from you. You can find Brent's Two Cents on Twitter and Facebook at Two Cents Belize. Or email us at podcast at oshaproductions.com. That's O-X-A Productions with an S dot com. Okay, I want to take a little bit of time and talk about the state of the nation, if you will. Now, I've been really struggling to record this episode this week, not because there isn't a lot to talk about, but because so much of what needs to be talked about isn't really that good for Belize. We're in trouble. Last week, we learned that our national debt is at 133% of GDP. The previous administration had been borrowing $30 million per month just to meet expenses. No doubt, the current administration is doing that as well, because certainly nothing has changed in terms of revenue in the last two weeks. So I won't be surprised if GST gets raised to 15 or even 16% when the next budget is presented. And I won't be surprised if that next budget doesn't come sooner than March. The previous Prime Minister had indicated that a supplemental budget was likely to be required mid-fiscal year. The 2020-2021 budget got shot to hell almost as soon as it was passed in the House. And now the PUP government may have no choice but to draft an austerity budget something that definitely goes against their brand. And speaking of debt, how about the net Vasquez scandal at BTL? So now it's reported that Vasquez is accused of misappropriating just over $850,000. That's more than double the figure of $400,000 that was in the news in September. But the number that jumped out at me when I watched the latest story on Channel 5 was $168,000. 945. That's how much money Vasquez has supposedly repaid from salary deductions. How much was the former chair of BTL making that he could afford to have the company hold back $160,000 of his salary? And how quickly was he able to repay that amount? When this news broke in September, Neither Vasquez, nor the Prime Minister, nor anyone at BTL said anything about salary deductions. 
Vasquez resigned on September 15th. In a statement he released announcing his resignation, Vasquez said he was stepping down a mere month before his planned retirement in October. So if Vasquez resigned the day after the scandal broke, then he certainly had no opportunity to work out a salary deduction schedule to pay back $160,000 of the money he owes. Now, it's important to note that on September 14th, BTL released a statement saying, quote, As soon as the board of Belize Telemedia Limited became aware of allegations of irregularities in relation to the use of the company credit card by the chairman of the board, a comprehensive investigation was launched. End quote. As soon as the board became aware, when exactly did the board become aware? I guess obviously early enough to start withholding part of Net Vasquez's salary while he was still actually on the payroll. Early enough that those salary deductions allegedly totaled over $160,000. So if that's the case, then Net Vasquez continued to serve as the chairman of Belize Telemedia Limited long after the board of directors of that publicly owned company became aware of so-called irregularities with the credit card. I'm sure the Net Vasquez saga won't be the only bad news we hear about from BTL as the new government starts peeling back the layers on that onion. And will anyone pay for their crimes? No, of course not. And then there's COVID-19. As of Sunday night, Belize had 2,000. 225 active cases and had recorded 116 deaths. The rate that both of those numbers have climbed in recent weeks is frightening. Hopefully the rainy weather on the November 19th holiday helped save a few lives. But one of Belize's most popular retailers was packed on Saturday as shoppers saved a whopping 10% on their purchases. Because, you know, Corona won't stop the Christmas brown. Now, the new PM says the previous government didn't have a plan to control the spread of the virus. Well, Johnny, what's yours? I know you've only been on the job for two weeks, but it's not like you weren't expecting to have to deal with an epidemic. I think the plan is to just say, fuck it, go enjoy Christmas and let's regroup and deal with this in January. And I think that's what a lot of people want. Now, the PM is in a tough spot. If he imposes any sort of lockdown or restrictions on movement, the business community is going to scream bloody murder. And so will the tourism industry. And government desperately needs tax revenue and any foreign exchange they can scrape up right now. The public will have little enthusiasm for stay-at-home orders or curfews. Not at this time of year. Not when many people seem to believe that all we have to do is make it until January 1st and there will be some sort of magical reset once 2020 is over. And politically, does Johnny Briseño really want to be forever known as the PM who cancelled Christmas? I mean, the UDP would campaign on that for at least the next three elections. So, here we are. We are losing more people to COVID-19 than gun violence. People are getting infected at 30 times the rate they were when we locked things down back in April. So I expect by early January, we will be living under some sort of stay-at-home restrictions. By then, the number of active cases will probably be around 5,000. And the number of deaths will be about 160. Now, I really hope I'm wrong about all of that. But as I said in an earlier episode of this podcast, I think that by 2021, we might be nostalgic for the good old days of 2020. (laughs) 
Okay, before I wrap up, I want to say thanks to Spencer for supporting this podcast once again by buying me a few more cups of coffee. This is not the first time Spencer has contributed financially, and I really appreciate your help. Now, if you want to chip in to help cover the costs of producing and distributing this podcast, you too can buy me a coffee for only three U.S. or six Belize. You'll find the link for buy me a coffee in the show notes. Remember, you can be part of the Belize podcast movement by sharing this show with at least one person who otherwise may not know about it. And don't forget to subscribe to Brent's Two Cents on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. You can contact me anytime on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Two Cents Belize. And you can find me on TikTok, so give me a follow there as well. Don't forget that you can also leave a voice message to play on a future episode by clicking on the link you'll find in the show notes. I love getting clips from listeners and making you a part of this podcast. And that's going to do it for episode 18 of Brent's Two Cents. Until next time, please continue to wear your masks, wash your hands, stay home as much as possible, and most importantly, be nice to each other. Brent's Two Cents is a presentation of OSHA Productions, Belize's affordable professional video production company.